Football Manager 2024 is out now on early access, which means a whole load of new players are getting to play the game for the very first time, which for a game as complex as this one can be pretty daunting and leave you with no idea where to begin. If that sounds like you, don't worry. In this video, I've got you covered. So whether you're enjoying the early access beta on PC, you've picked up the game on Game Pass, or you're playing on PS5, Nintendo Switch, or even Apple Arcade, this video will take you through step by step how to set up your game so it works the way you want it to and try to minimize some of that early game confusion. Also, if you happen to be watching this before you've even bought the game to get a feel for what it's like, check my link at the top of the description for a discount code for FM24 that will get you the game cheaper than it is on Steam or Epic while supporting the channel. But without further ado, let's take you through my beginner's guide to Football Manager 2024. And when you load the game up for the first time, it is going to look an awful lot like this screen. There might be some slight differences. You're not going to have Brighton kits in the background. You're not going to have the option to load your most recent save uh, because you won't have one if you're brand new. If you played FM23, you might have the option here to load an FM23 save. That is a new feature for FM24. But chances are, if you're completely new, um, you'll just have the option to start a new game and then you'll have the load game, join online game stuff as well. But if you're new, new, you want to be starting a new game. And that is what I'm going to be taking you through in this video. If you're looking for a, a guide for how to play the early stages of the game, that's coming up in a couple of days. There'll be a video called Your First Week in Football Manager, where we're actually going to do things like setting up tactics, getting your transfer sorted, sorted, your staff, your training, that kind of thing. This video is very much about getting the game set up so that it works the way you want it to work. Either way, you should leave a thumbs up on the video. If you find it helpful, subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications notifications on so you don't miss out on those upcoming guides and also the daily let's play content and all the other lovely fm24 content we've got here on the channel at the moment but before we hit start new game the first thing i would suggest you do is go into preferences and there are a few things you can mess around in here that are very much going to optimize your in-game experience the first is scaling if you're playing on a, a standard 1080p pc monitor and this is set to 100%, I would suggest you actually take it down to 95%. It'll make the text ever so slightly smaller, but does add loads more information to the screen. If you don't want loads of information, if the idea of that sounds daunting, by all means, leave it on 100. But when we get a little bit further into this tutorial series and you start seeing some gameplay and you see the touchline tablet, if you don't know what that is, you will soon. But if you see the touchline tablet and mine has six sections on it, so it gives you all the information you need and you're thinking, well, mine's only got four. This is why. If you make this 95% now, it will automatically already have the six. It will already have the extra information on player profiles, club profiles, that kind of thing. If you're playing on a particularly old laptop with a smaller resolution than that, you might even have to take the scaling down even further. Or if you're like me and you're playing on a massive 28-inch 4K monitor, you actually might want to zoom in a bit because the game looks tiny. If you leave it on 100% on a 4K monitor... My old man eyes can't read it properly, so I take mine up to 125%, and that's what you're seeing now. This is a 4K screen on 125%, and this is my comfortable level. But you can try around with those, get an idea for what works best for you. But like I say, the smaller you're scaling, the more information you're going to get on the screen at the same time. You might also just want to check that you've got your graphic settings recommended for your PC. Um, I have a NASA supercomputer, so I can have mine on very high I'd suggest just put recommended for this PC and you should be fine. And if you don't want loads of iffy crowd noise to happen when you're trying to sneak a game in bed before you go to sleep at night, you might want to just untick match sounds and music. Leave them on if you want the sound. For me, absolutely not. You can then go into advanced settings and there are a few things in advanced settings you're going to want to tweak. Firstly, you're going to want to turn auto saves on. The last thing you want to do is have a long game session and realize that the, your computer's crashed and you haven't saved the game. So I have mine set to save once a week on a three file rolling auto save. So what that means is you've always got three files, the, the current one this week, last week, and the week before, it's good for if you get any kind of bug or if the save file corrupts and you can't reload the one you've just done, you don't have to go back really far. You can just go back a week or two and play a previous version of the game. But there's so many settings on there. You could even have a, you can have it saving every day with a, a new file for every auto save. So you end up with thousands and thousands of save files. I would suggest you don't do that. These save files can get 
pretty big. Um, there's a couple of other bits for you to tweak in here as well. Um, if you want to do stuff like adding the real kits, real faces, real badges that aren't in the license leagues, I've actually got videos already showing you how to do that. It's a little more complex than the basic stuff, um, which is why I'm not including it in this one. But you can go and check those videos out if you want to be able to do that. But the other thing that I like to do on the settings page is go to formats and just English this up a little bit because as standard, I think height is in meters, weight is in kilograms, distance is in kilometers, that kind of thing. So I just, I change all this to match the stuff I'm most comfortable with. Feet, stones, yards, miles, pounds, normal match odds, dates done in the correct order. Obviously, depending on where you are in the world and what you prefer to play the game, and you can customize this to whatever currency, whatever way of measuring how big you are that you want lots of different options um this is the one that works for me so i set it to this hit confirm and that just means every save i start now will be set up with those settings so once we've done that the next thing is to actually start a new game obviously you might want to join an online game eventually but if you're completely brand 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 new you want to get a feel for the game first so you hit start new game and you then have game modes to select from we're going to be starting here on career mode. There are other things that you can do the deeper in you get. And if there's a demand for it, let me know down in the comments. I can do tutorials on things like create a club, playing online, doing fantasy draft, playing versus mode. But they're, they're a separate thing. They're a different part of the game. So for now, we're just going to set up a single player one player offline local career mode we're going to click on that and uh, at that point you then have to choose the club that you want to manage you can actually start managing a club you can start managing an international team you can even start unemployed if you're completely new i would recommend your best starting point because you're already going to be familiar with them is to just pick your favorite club um so for me in the Premier League, that would be Arsenal. So I'll just click Arsenal. Obviously, you won't have all these badges if you haven't installed the badge pack separately. So those videos are linked down below. But if we just pick Arsenal and then choose game mode, this is actually a new feature for FM24. So if you've dabbled a little bit with FM in the past, everything so far might have felt familiar. Uh, but this is new and it's important that you select the right one for how you want to play your game. So there's three game modes to choose from. Original mode is the standard way Football Manager has been forever. If you've ever played it before, you've played it on original mode and it's probably your best place to start. And with original mode, you start on whatever start date you pick. You'll get to that in a second. And the squads are up to date as of the end of the transfer window that has just finished. So if you're starting your game around about the launch of the game, October, November time, your squads will be up to date as of the end of August transfer deadline day. If you're starting your game in March, next, like March 2024, um, the squads will be up to date as of the end of the January transfer window. You will start the game at the start of the season, though, with whatever start game you pick. So it's just whatever the real squads are in real life at the time you start your game, um, that's how they'll start in original mode, but you'll start at the beginning of the season. You then have two new options. Real world is based on players arriving when they arrive in real life. So if you start your game, for example, at the start of July, your squads will be correct as they were at the start of July. But if you then had transfers coming in and out of your clubs, and obviously you will, that went through July, through August, maybe the January transfer window as well, those transfers will be set up as future transfers and will happen on the date that they happened in real life. So, for example, we've got Brighton behind me and Sufati signed for Brighton right at the end of the transfer window in the summer. So when you start your game in July, he won't be at Brighton, but he'll have a future transfer arranged and will arrive at the end of the transfer window. Likewise, any transfers that happen in real life in January, they'd happen in January in game. And then you've got your world mode, which is something a little bit different. As it says there, if you want to explore a different reality, it resets back to, it says there, the 3rd of July. And the squads will be accurate as of the 3rd of July, your date you start your game. But all of the future transfers will be cancelled. So in that example we just used, Ansu Fati never arrives at Brighton. He just stays at Barcelona. It also means Caicedo 
is still at Brighton and you can choose whether to sell him or not. So three different options. Um, I do, if you want to see more on your world, I am doing a Twitch save on Chelsea in your world mode at the moment. Um, so you can come and watch that on Twitch. I stream most nights, twitch.tv slash Lelujo, or there's highlights of that series on my second channel, Lelujo 2, that I'll link to down below. But for today, we are just focusing on original mode. If you are brand, 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 brand new, and it's already seeming confusing, just hit quick start here. You don't need to overcomplicate it um if you do want to complicate things a little further though you can do an advanced setup and i'll just talk you through advanced setup so you know what you're doing here like i say if this all seems very daunting just do quick start you'll get straight into the game from here but to do your advanced setup there's lots of things that you can select on this screen and a lot of it will be dictated based on how good your pc is you see we've got the estimated game speed here thing in stars Every time you make a change to how your game is going to be set up, the game will change your estimated game speed. I would recommend if you don't want your computer to grind to a halt once you get a year or two into your save, you probably don't want your game estimated game speed to drop below three stars. Anything three star or above is comfortably playable. You won't necessarily notice a difference. Obviously, five stars is going to fly. If you take this game speed down to one star, and if you've got an older computer and you try and load too many leagues, it will go down to that level. And what you'll end up doing is finding yourself getting stuck in really long loading times, continue times between games, and the game will feel close to unplayable so be very conscious of what your estimated game speed is but from there you can adjust lots of things so as a, at a basic level you can choose the size of your database so we can have a small database which would have twenty five thousand players in a medium database which is a little bit more or a large database within that you can even go even more advanced and be like well in addition to there being a large database i also want to load every single player who plays in England, for example, or is based in England. So you can click um, Nations, England, and then from here, you can be like, right, I want every player who is based in England to be in my game, which immediately takes your approximate player count up to 43,900, so almost doubles the number of players in your database or even a large database by no means has every player in. So if you're registered on the books of a a tiny little non-league team in the youth team and you want to make sure your name is in there this is the, this is the way to do it make sure that all of your uh, all of the players are loaded in your nation i'm not going to mess around with any of this though i'm just going to leave it on i think i mean i've got a good pc we can leave it on a large database you can already see the difference the large database has made we've gone down already to four and a half stars of game speed and now we've got to pick our leagues so as standard it will just load up a few leagues based on where you're going to start we're starting in england and it's recommending that we also load up brazil scotland and spain no idea on what basis it's picked those but you can click add or remove leagues and as the name suggests add and remove leagues based on which leagues you want to be involved so you can take these ones off if you don't want them on you could add another one on so we could add france and germany and italy and if we're having brazil let's add argentina and uh, then you can click confirm and be like oh okay okay that's taken my game speed down to a level i didn't necessarily want it to go to maybe we'll take some of these out so let's take Argentina out and just the action of removing Argentina takes us back to back up to three and a half stars we could remove Brazil as well I'm going to leave them in because we all like a Brazilian wonder kid um, and then you can also choose how deep down the pyramid each one of these nations go playing as Arsenal we're in the top league we probably don't need the National League North and South loaded if you were playing in the National League North and South you probably might want the lower leagues and some of the other nations loaded as well so you can go down a little bit deeper in these other nations but for me I think having the top maybe just the first division in Brazil and then the top two tiers in all of these other nations um, we might have all four in the Scot in Scotland because they're nearby aren't they and we'll just have league two and above and you can see most of those tweaks haven't made much of a difference to the game speed our database is now just under fifty thousand players which feels like a nice amount and then before you hit continue and get started a couple of other things to select firstly you can choose your game start date so because we're starting in england the start dates are based on the dates in the english league and you can start everywhere from early pre-season 
which is classed as the 3rd of July. You could go later in the preseason, the start of the season, the start of the Premier League season. You could even go as far as the first matches in the Champions League. So if you're just really keen to manage in the Champions League, you can have your game start on the 18th of September. So the summer transfers are all done. That's all finished. The window is closed. The first Premier League games are done. The first international break is out of the way. And you'll literally turn up on match day of your first Champions League game. You can just crack on with that. I don't know why you'd want to do that but maybe you just want to play in the Champions League for me I'm going to leave it as the standard one early pre-season gives us as long as possible to sort out things like pre-season training tactics transfers all that kind of stuff that we'll be doing in that next video in this playlist your first week in Football Manager which will be coming like I say in a couple of days and then lastly on here you've got all of your advanced options I'll briefly talk you through what each one of these does so you can decide which ones you want on and then also show you my settings for these as well uh, firstly use fake players and staff very self-explanatory if you tick that all of those real life players and managers and all of the stuff that makes the football manager database so awesome and so unique disappear they're basically all deleted and they just generate a whole load of fake players to fill the game up with. Probably not something you want to do as a brand new player. It is quite a fun thing to do later on in the game cycle if you're getting a little bit bored of playing the same old saves over and over again, always signing the same old players. It really does test your football manager skills because you can't bring any real world knowledge in because it's all irrelevant because it's all fake players. Obviously, I'm not going to do that on this one. We're going to leave the real players in. I don't do that very often, but it can be a little bit of fun when you do do it. Um, you can have the option to tell it not to use real fixtures. Now, it doesn't always use real fixtures in every league. In the licensed leagues, it will. Premier League is not licensed, so if you are in England watching this, it doesn't matter if you press that or not. You're not going to get the fixtures that happen in the same place, in the same order. You're not going to get the same Champions League groups and that kind of thing. Um you can turn it off so that it doesn't happen anywhere. I tend to just not touch it. I don't mind the real fixtures being on where they need to be on. I, I don't feel the need to fiddle with it. Uh, do not add key staff. I leave this one ticked. If you leave it unticked, when you start the game, if a club hasn't got a, a physio, for example, it will generate a fake one and put them in. I don't want loads of fake staff to be generated and added to my clubs. So I tick that to stop it from doing it. So that club will now just not have a physio. They'll have to go out and hire one. If you want to go into a club and know that you're fully staffed right from the start, maybe you want to leave that unticked so that they get a load of fake staff in. I'd rather just go and get the staff myself. And player add players to playable teams is the same thing, but for players, but the buttons are the opposite way around, just to confuse you. <laughs> so... If, you, if you've got, a, it usually happens for the little non-league teams where they might not be fully researched. If you, uh, if you just load the game up as standard and the club has only got 10 players on their books in the FM database, it will load up with just those 10 players and you'll have to sign the rest of your squad. If you tick add players to playable teams, it will add a load of fake players to fill the squad. So you've got a full squad of players. But again, if you're looking for realism, you don't want a load of fake players, so you leave that one unticked. So we're telling both of these options to do the same thing, but in order to do that, one of them has to be ticked, one of them has to be unticked. I don't know why they need to overcomplicate it and have the buttons do the reverse thing, but they do. This next one is something that a lot of people like to do if they're looking for that full realism mode. If you tick this box, disable first window transfer activity, it basically takes everybody's transfer budgets away up until the end of the first transfer window, so no transfers will happen. Happen. So because the database is accurate to the end of that first transfer window, if you want to make sure that they don't kind of redo their transfer window again, even though they've already done it, you can just tick that. No transfers will happen during that first window. First transfers start happening from the 1st January. It's up to you whether you tick that or not. I tend not to, but you can tick it if you want to. No one's going to be upset with you. Attribute masking is it's basically like the fog of war in strategy games um, where you can't just automatically click on any player in the world and see all of their attributes straight away. If you tick that, it disables attribute masking. So that means you can click on any player anywhere in the world and see all their attributes straight away. If you have it unticked, you can't. You have to scout them first. So you'd have to send your scouts to have a look at them probably multiple times to get all of their attributes in. And it makes it a little bit more accurate to how it is in the real world. Obviously, you can't just snap your fingers and know everything about every player straight away. It does make the game a little bit harder, though, because you can't immediately tell if a player is going to be good enough to sign for you. It takes a little bit of time. There's more 
steps to go through before making signings. So if you want a nice, easy beginner's experience, disable attribute masking. If you want as close to realism as possible, untick that, have attribute masking on, and then you can just scout players to decide if they're good enough to play for you. Um, this next one only really comes into play if you're playing a multiplayer game in single player there's not really any benefit to ticking this box. It basically just makes it so that you can't take over as manager of a club that already has a manager in game. Now, obviously, if you're just setting up a single player game, just pick who you're going to manage. <laughs> you don't need to have the game force you to not let you manage certain teams. You've probably already decided at this point who you're going to manage. But if you're like hosting a, a network game with a number of people in, if you tick that, it will mean the only clubs they can add themselves to as manager are the clubs that don't have a manager in the database already or they'll have to wait for somebody to be fired. Um, so it's quite a cool thing for multiplayer games, which again, that's a whole separate video, setting up a multiplayer game. And then lastly, prevent use of the in-game editor the in-game editor doesn't actually come as standard it's a paid dlc i don't think at the time of recording it's even available yet for fm24 it usually comes out on full release of the game um if you tick this box you can't use it in your save so certainly for my youtube and twitch content i always have that box ticked so nobody can accuse me of cheating and it just it will not allow you to use the editor if you want to be able to use the editor make sure it's unticked and you'll have to go and buy the editor as well which will be available at some point it's usually like a pound it's not very expensive um but we'll leave it prevent use of in-game editor and that is your advanced settings all set up ready to go from there you can just hit start game it will then go and do all of the setting up of the database stuff and we'll come back on the other side of that. So once all of the uh, database setup and stuff is done, you then have to choose or create a manager profile. I've already got one because I've already played some saves on FM24, but if you're brand new, you'll be creating a manager profile and you'll have a screen that looks a lot like this one. You can spend as much or as little time on this screen as you want to. Um, I'm just going to very quickly pop my details in again. So there's my name. Um, I am Matt. I'm English. I was born in Peterborough. You get the idea. I'm just going to fill this screen in. Um, yeah, I was born in 1993. We'll leave that as it is. Uh, and, uh, and then you can choose your favourite team as well on there or add more than one favourite team. And that does have, it has an impact on in-game, like, message it i don't think it affects how well you manage the team it does have an, an impact on some of the emails and things that you get in game and then you can choose um what level of experience you've got um if you are if you are new you're going to want to leave that ticked teach me about key management concepts and the in-game tutorials will come up when it's time for them to come up if you want to be clever don't be clever if you're new leave that ticked but you can decide which tutorials you see and which yeah just leave but if you're new and obviously you are if you're this far into this video for goodness sake leave it ticked um and then you can go and select your body um so i'm six foot two and yes i'm a thin man um and skin tone stuff like that um what's me down, way, way down here probably um and then you can import a 3d model from a photo it's usually not very good, but the option is there. Um, and then you can select all this stuff. Or if you don't care about any of this, you can just randomize. So we'll just hit randomize. Um, likewise, you can randomize the clothes that you're wearing. There is, I mean, there are lots of... You can really go deep on this if you want to. It's like playing an RPG. Um, but, I mean, we'll just hit random a few times until we see... So there you go. We'll have an Arsene Wenger coat on. We're managing Arsenal. It seems right to have an Arsene Wenger coat. Um, you can add a hearing aid. You can add an eye patch. Um, you can add glasses, pin badges face paint there you go we'll add a bit of face paint why not um let's get some glasses on as well because you know i am a spectacle wearer and for some reason it adds earrings as standard so i'm going to take the earrings off because i don't have any earrings i'm far too old and not cool enough for an earring and then once you've got your manager looking how you want him to look you then need to decide what kind of manager he is i would always recommend you tick the box to um have the attributes match up with the club that you're going to be managing because if your attribute if you're managing a big club like Arsenal and you your attributes are too low so for example you've got a national C license and Sunday league football so really low attributes the players are not going to pay attention to anything you say you're going to find it very difficult you're going to get sacked very very quickly um likewise if you are managing a small club and you set this stuff really high 
you're going to be able to attract players you wouldn't be able to attract to ordinarily and it's going to be it's going to make the game much easier this is the closest football manager gets to a difficulty setting the lower your coaching badges and your past playing experience the harder the game is if you want the game at its level that it's supposed to be at, you tick the boxes. If you really are daunted about what you're about to do and you want it to be as easy as possible, manage a slightly smaller team and set this stuff to the top level and you'll actually find the game that bit easier. From there, you can choose what type of manager you want to be. Um, you can actually fiddle around with all these individual settings separately. That's very advanced level stuff that I wouldn't worry about doing if you are brand new. Um, you can kind of move this slider to if you're more of a tracksuit manager, more of a suit wearing manager. So are you are you more of a coach? Are you more of a manager? I tend to just leave it in the middle. And then you've got these different management style focuses, which they're basically like preset character designs. So if you want to be good at player discipline click disciplinarian you can see it gives you level 20 of discipline and then the other attributes that go well with that like you've got a high mental training attribute motivator leans more towards motivating they're all pretty self-explanatory but you'll probably have an idea of what kind of manager you'd like to think you're going to be are you a tactician are you a, a taskmaster are you a motivator pick the one that you think best describes best describes how you'd like to be as a manager and just go with it and you don't really need to fiddle with anything else and you can just hit confirm on there and then if you're adding more players you can add them here but we're just doing a single player game so we can hit start playing um and then it'll do some more thinking i was going to say something's supposed to happen there. i don't know why that took so long it doesn't normally take that long and then you get to this breaking news screen which just announces you as the new manager it's been a long time since i've been an inexperienced 29 year old it's very nice to be back. Um, click next. It gives you a little bit of background on your club. So you can get, if you're managing someone you're not familiar with, which if you've followed my instructions, you'll be managing the club you support. So you won't need any of this. But if you've picked a random team in some random league and you don't know who they are, this gives you a bit of a background on who they are. Uh, a a whistle-stop tour to how what their reputation is, where what, how you're expected to do this season. So Arsenal are looking for a third-place finish, according to the media, and then how much money you've got, budgets, that kind of thing. Thing. so a little bit of a little bit of background on the club and then an idea of what the best 11 and best formation is based on the squad as it is at the start of the game so the game thinks Arsenal's best formation is this 4-3-3 with this combination of players it's not a million I mean I'd probably argue Martinelli should be in ahead of Saka and Saka should be on the other side it's nearly there and it's a, it's a starting point. In the next video, where we do the first week in FM24, we'll actually look a little bit at tactics and how to choose the tactic you're going to use, the players you're going to put in it. For now, that just it's something to put at the back of your mind as a little bit of a a little bit of a thing. Okay, we're probably going to try a four three three, and these are probably our better players. And it's a nice little starting point. You then find out how the board want you to manage for the year. So these are the expectations from your board. If you don't meet these expectations, you might find yourself in a difficult situation. So the board culture is sign players under the age of 18 for the future. So the Arsenal board want you to sign young players. So again, a thing to have in the back of your mind when it comes to you putting together your, your transfer strategy that we'll do in the next episode. Um, and then these are the long-term goals, work within the wage budget, grow, grow reputation, basically become a bigger club, but do it whilst working within the wage budget. And specifically this season, they're looking for qualification for the Champions League, challenging for the FA Cup, reaching the later stages of the Champions League and be competitive in the Carabao Cup, which basically means don't get knocked out to someone rubbish and then each one of these has an importance level so the ones you really need to focus on are the required ones if you fail a required objective you'll probably get sacked or be very close to so the required objectives at Arsenal the non-negotiable things you must do this first season you must qualify for the Champions League and stay within the wage budget from there they're also oh and also get to the last stages of the Champions League there's three required objectives and then you've got others that are more or less important than each other so they're pretty it's pretty important that you sign young players um, it's less important that you are competitive in the Carabao Cup they don't really care about that so again stuff to keep in mind prioritise obviously you're going to prioritise Champions League games over Carabao Cup games and over FA Cup games for example 
And then this is what the fans want. Um, so the supporters are expecting you to play attacking, entertaining football and finish above Spurs, Man United, Chelsea and Liverpool. So that sounds a lot like second in the league to me, not third. If you're finishing above all three of those, you're probably not going to be finishing third. But again, it's required that they finish above Spurs and Liverpool. If you end up finishing below Man United or Chelsea, I mean, that all that feels very backwards based on the reality of the Premier League at the moment. Um, and then these are all of your tutorials and things that you will want to have on. Don't ignore these. These are the things that we're going to be going through as part of the first week in the job um, video that's going to be coming up very, very soon. And these will take you through all of these different areas of the games and show you how to do them. If you're a new player, you've got to do them. They are good and they will help. So leave them on. You can even get them all sent today if you want to have them all sent in one go. And then lastly... Final part of setup, um, you can decide whether or not you want to have a press conference to meet the media. You may as well. Do you want an intra-squad friendly, so your first team against your reserve team? You probably do to get a feel for the squad. And then how often you want to have your meetings with your backroom staff. It's a personal preference thing. I find them a little bit pointless. So I do it every month and then don't even turn up to them. You can leave that set however you want it set. And then from there, hit confirm. It just asks you to save your game. Um, so you can see I've got my uh, my YouTube save, my Twitch save already saved on here. Um, so we'll just save our game. We'll call this, this is the tutorial save um, because we're going to be coming back to this in a couple of videos over the next week or two, just showing how different parts of the game work. But from there, we're going to leave this video here and then pick up from this point in the next one. Um, which will be out in a couple of days time showing you what to do on your first day we'll have another one showing you what to do on the first week and this is going to be a little bit of a tutorial series that you can then play along with and uh, hopefully get to grips with fm24 if you found that video helpful, I would really appreciate a nice big thumbs up on there from you. Let me know down in the comments section if there's anything you specifically want future tutorials about as well, and I'll make sure I make those as well. Subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on so you don't miss out on the rest of this series and also all of the other FM content that's going to be coming up over the next few weeks, months, years. We've been doing this a while now, and thank you very much for watching.